So this is it. This is the finale of the Great Coats by Sebastian A. Castell. Was it any good? Let's find out. So welcome back to the channel, everybody. Like and subscribe, of course, as always, if you haven't. Um, so Tyrant's Throne, book four. Uh, if you watched my recent video of my November wrap-up, I did briefly talk about this book. It definitely brought the series back into what I expected it to be uh, after the large misstep for me that was Saint's Blood, book three. Long story short, I feel like Saint's Blood was kind of a misstep. It was a side quest. It really didn't move the plot forward that much. It kind of brought a bunch of new plot elements into it that I didn't care for and I thought were unnecessary for the series. Um, I wasn't going to DNF the series three books in with only one to go, but I don't blame people that did because that book really wasn't great for me. Again, as I've said plenty of times before, I really feel like what occurred in book three should have just been an ongoing plot in the background of the series, and it should have been a true trilogy, you know, Add another 100 pages to Trader's Blade, add 100 pages to, uh, not Tyrant's Throne, to Night Shadow, and then have Tyrant's Throne still be its, you know, 600-ish pages, or what, you know, whatever it was. It was about 600 pages. It should have just been a true trilogy, because I feel like that, that kind of side story and plot of book three just, it didn't do it for me. It kind of padded it. That book almost felt like the middle book syndrome of a three-story arc. So overall didn't like that one, but Tyrant's Throne did what I expected it to do and hoped that it would do, which is bring the series back to kind of the reasons that I fell in love with it to begin with. Uh, you have a lot of comedy in this one. You have a lot of action. You have, you know, fantastic moments happening. You are exploring a little bit more of other characters that you didn't spend a lot of time with before. Um, whereas like some of the people that were introduced in book three, you spend honestly even less time with them than I was expecting here. This is really focused on Kest, Brasti, and Falcio as it should be. Um, but Dariana, Valiana, some of the other side characters that kind of grew in prominence in books two to three definitely take a back seat here. You do get a lot more from some other characters that may have been, uh, missing at, at times in the other books. You learn more about the tailor, you learn more about Trin, you learn about some other characters that you may not have known about before. Uh, this book does introduce kind of a new villain as well uh, for our heroes to take on. So that was actually a really interesting plot line. And you, you get more and more um, information and background as to what King Palis really wanted the Great Coats to be and what they, you know, their final mission was going to be. Because if you've read the series at this point, you know that King Palis kind of set every single great coat on like a final quest for him. So you get some awesome reveals in this book specifically of what those are, what the king's final words were for some of the various great coats, whether they be our main cast or otherwise. Uh, so those moments were always very, very well done. So of course, um, up to this point, the entire quest that Falcio and his crew have been on is to get Aline on the throne. Now, that is basically to the point of where you start this book at, it's coming to fruition. This book revolves around, you know, the final steps needed to be taken to put her on the throne. So, of course, things don't always go as planned. This book is not obviously just going to be Falcio, you know, crowning Aline and then, oh, scene, book's over, everybody's happy. Uh, so, of course, things happen. I'm not going to spoil what does happen with anybody in this book. You have some returning uh, antagonists with armies. You have new antagonists with armies. There is a lot coming to a head in this finale, which was fantastic. And I want to talk a little bit about how the story was structured and the pacing of it. You know, good, bad, ugly, all that good stuff. So this obviously takes place shortly after Saint's Blood ends. There's no time jump or anything like that. This is a pretty concise story, even though I didn't like Saint's Blood. Um, the, the overall story and pace of the entire tale that is told in these books is pretty straightforward. There's no giant time gaps. There's no, you know, jumping around in different worlds. Like this is very much just Falcio's quest to get a lean on the throne in Tristia. And that is your path. That's what you're on the entire time. Uh, and this book does a great job of bringing that all to a head and bringing the series back to what I enjoyed from books one and two. So I think this is actually one of the, the best paced books of the series. Book two, I think, is still my favorite. Um, but there were some moments in that book that went on a little long. And there were some things that were like, 
I don't know, not paced perfectly. I would say book one might have had the best pacing just because it was kind of like a, it was new, it was fresh, and it was almost nonstop action throughout with great speeches and stuff. And then book two kind of grew on all of that. Book three kind of fell off a cliff and then climbed back up for Tyrant's Throne and got back to the finish line. Um, but this book was very well done. I think the length is justified for sure. This does a good job of bringing more elements of Tristia to the forefront, learning more about characters and the gods and the saints after being bashed over the head with all that information in book three. Um, this does a better job of fleshing out King Palos's wishes and what he wanted from his greatcoats and, again, continuing to just trip up Falcio at every moment possible because this guy just cannot catch a break. He probably should have just left on the boat with Athalia way back in the first book when that whole random scene that everybody hates, when she was like, just come away with me, let's go live on an island. Like, he probably should have done that. He'd have a much happier life. Um, but back to the, the, the pacing of the book is done very well. There are no real dull moments. There are some goofy moments, for sure, that may or may not affect you uh, the way that it did me. There was one particular scene that I thought was just like, the way it plays out was just really dumb and silly, uh, but it's fine. I got over it because basically what it does to get you to where it takes you makes sense. You definitely spend a little bit more time with Valiana and Dariana, but not a whole lot. This book is, I mean, this entire series is very focused on Falcio. It's very much his story. The character work here is great, in my opinion. I think a lot of these characters are very funny to be around. They're engaging. There's always a good Falcio speech, at least one per book. There's a great one in this book as well. I still don't think it tops anything from uh, even Trader's Blade. That had some of the best speeches. Jay Castell just does a fantastic job of speeches in these books, and Falcio delivers them time and time again, and there are some of those in this book as well. This book definitely does a little bit of a better job of the world building. I mean, it's pretty straightforward in general. This, this isn't some like big, high epic fantasy. Like You kind of just get the gist of the setting, this period that it's in, uh, Tristia is, you know, very similar to a lot of other, not even necessarily medieval, because this is more advanced than medieval. This is like Three Musketeers setting, so I don't know if this would be like 1600s. I don't really know the timeline. They have cannons, they have guns, but they also use swords and axes and there's knights. So it's like, it's kind of like a blend. I don't really know where to put this on like a timeline, but it's kind of like, y you know what you're getting. This isn't like some big epic fantasy that's being built up this is not supposed to be so the world building is pretty consistent throughout it's pretty straightforward this focuses much more on the character work the action the dialogue um all of which are great in this book in my opinion this really did bring the whole series home uh and had one of the coolest albeit somewhat <laughs> goofy and ridiculous uh fights that i've seen in a book but it was fantastic and there was one particular moment in it that reminded me of a scene from uh, the movie 300, uh, which I don't want to spoil, but if you've read the book, I think you'll you'll know the, the part that I'm talking about. It involves two characters, but it, uh, it was great. The series was a lot of fun. I was very worried after Saints Blood that I wasn't going to enjoy this book, and I was just hoping that this book brought it home, and it did. Uh, so now I'm actually excited to read De Castell's other works. So Spellslinger, which I know is kind of like a younger version of the Great Coats almost. It's like more YA-ish kind of theme to it. But I'm looking forward to actually reading some of that and seeing what that has to offer. As well as De Castell is working on a new, um, I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or how many books it's going to be, but it's going to be, I believe one of the Great Coats, either children or grandchildren are going to have a story take place in Tristia. So obviously several years, decades down the future. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, and overall I enjoyed this book a lot. This series is great. I uh, highly recommend it. Yeah, I didn't love book three, but there are a lot of people that do, so you may love it. Um, I think Trader's Blade is one of the strongest intros to the series that I've read this year because it was hilarious. It was very heavy with the action. It's just a lot of fun. I mean, you can't take this series that seriously. Um, there is some hand-wavy things that you just gotta... <laughs> Just don't worry about it. it. You know, things happen. Uh, there, there's a cavalry charge. Yeah, whatever. Just move on. But that is going to wrap this one up, guys. That was the Great Coats. So I do have full reviews of the entire series now on the channel. So I do hope you check those out. And definitely give these books a shot if you haven't. 
Uh, thank you to Mike for doing this read-along. This was a lot of fun. I probably wouldn't have even picked up the series if I didn't follow your channel and know about it. So thank you again for that because it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed the hell out of these books. So like and subscribe as always. Do join the Patreon if you want to support the channel financially. That is, of course, always optional, but always appreciated. Do leave a comment down below or jump in Discord where we can continue the conversation. I'm in there every day, probably too much, <laughs> but we have a lot of great conversations in Discord, so a lot of fun to be had there. Um, but until next time, everybody, keep reading.